What up, motherfucks? It's your boy, the hater up in this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was doing a few other videos that I haven't posted yet for some reason, but I figured I would post this one that I'm recording, obviously, right now, because it's context-sensitive, all right? WWE has, rele has released more jobbers, but unlike the other crop of jobbers before, this crop of jobbers actually has some sad cases, you know what I mean? And I will do my best to explain the difference, and this will tie in very well to, to my next video that I recorded a few days ago about, uh, <clears throat> what's his face, Alistair Black, amongst other things. Alright, so let's quickly go over the releases. There was a lot of releases, I believe, yesterday up in this bitch, alright? Fandango is no longer with WWE. Everrise, which apparently were called Chase Parker and Matt Martell, no longer part of WWE. Arya Davari, not part of WWE. Tony Nees, motherfucks. Tony Nees, he's not there anymore. August Gray, I don't know who that is, but he's not in WWE anymore. Tyler Breeze, motherfucks, not in WWE anymore. The Bollywood Boys, all right, not in WWE anymore. Uh, Marina Shafir, who is uh, Roderick Strong's wife, not there anymore. Kurt Stallion, I think I've seen him once on NXT, not there anymore. Arturo Huas, uh, not there anymore. Killian Dane, not there anymore. And of course, last and definitely least, Tino Sapatelli, the guy who has been paid for, what, 10 years and hasn't wrestled one match, is no longer there anymore. Now, with that being said, all right, this crop of wrestlers, a lot of these people, in my opinion, don't deserve to be released. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're thinking, hater. These guys are probably the biggest jobbers in the history of wrestling. And while that may be true, I believe that the upside in some of these people is greater than the upside in people like Aleister Black or Samoa Joe. Furthermore, I believe that it's greater than the upside in people like Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens who continue to get paid by this company. Now, why do I think that? Let's go over it one by one. Fandango. Fandango has had several thousand opportunities to get over. Fandango got his music over. Fandango is a bit generic. Now, Fandango has a lot of attributes. He reminds me of Zack Ryder, right? He's a good-looking guy. He's athletic enough. He's not horrible in the ring. And he has some charisma. However, he is not different from Zack Ryder. He is not different from Dolph Ziggler. And quite frankly, that's not enough in this company. All right? Everize, these guys were obviously jobber tag team, you know, for what they were, they were all right, but I have no opinion on them, you know what I mean? They didn't particularly like, you know, make me think they were great in any capacity when I looked at them, so there you have it. Arya Davari, I don't watch 205 Live, just like everyone else doesn't watch 205 Live, but Arya Davari, I've seen him wrestle and Arya Davari is not bad, all right? Tony Nese, same exact thing. Tony Nese is the guy that I use as an example when I'm trying to make a point. And the point typically is something along the lines of, why doesn't Tony Nese get an opportunity? Why is Naomi getting opportunities, right? You know, in, in this day and age, I understand. You know, after the Me Too movement, people started sucking the dick of every woman that they could see, right? Every time a woman said something, people were like, oh, we have to put value in this because people that aren't us didn't put value on what other women were saying 20 years ago, right? Because the mentality in this country, unfortunately, has devolved into that. It's basically like, oh, people three generations ago oppressed women, so now I have to give women everything that I possibly can. And hey, that's fine. The hater is all about equality, motherfucks. But the problem is that when you give someone equality, you're taking it away from someone else, right? And the question becomes, why is it give divas a chance and not give cruiserweights a chance, right? Surely, the cruiserweights are also held down in wrestling because that's been the argument. The argument has always been women have been held down in wrestling and never taken as seriously as they deserve to be taken, which is accurate, you know? Nobody can really deny that. The facts are what the facts are, right? China, you know, was an amazing talent, right? There's no reason why Becky Lynch should have the honor of being the first person to win a WrestleMania main event in a women's match, right? China was better than Becky Lynch. And, you know, she didn't get the, the, the rub, basically, because, because she was a woman. I mean, let's say it like it is, right? China was 50 times the wrestler that Becky Lynch is, and about a thousand times the charisma and personality. 
You know, yeah, she didn't get her opportunity, and the reason is that. But you know who else didn't get their opportunity, motherfucks? A lot of cruiserweights, right? Sure, there's a few exceptions here, like Eddie Guerrero, Jericho, obviously Rey Mysterio, but a lot of cruiserweights never got the opportunity to be anything more than cruiserweights. And Tony Nese, and quite frankly, Davari as well, and the other Davari, right? Both Davaris and Tony Nese are really good examples of this, right? Tony Nese looks like a million bucks, like he has like a good physique, you know, he obviously goes to the gym. He's a pretty good wrestler, he reminds me of Pac a lot, right? He has like, he has like Pac aesthetic. He doesn't have the same moveset as Pac, but 30 people do. But the point I'm trying to make is this, like, you know, during the whole women's uh, evolution, revolution, right? Certain women came through that were great wrestlers, you know? Or at least better than average. Like Charlotte Flair is better than average. Charlotte Flair is better than like Cedric Alexander or better than Ricochet. Like I'd rather I'd rather see her than Ricochet or Cedric Alexander. But I'm not sure that I would rather see Charlotte uh, as opposed to Tony Nese, right? And the reason why I'm not sure is because I haven't seen enough of Tony Nese. But what I have seen leads me to believe that he deserves a bit more. Or I should say he deserved a bit more, right? Compare someone like Tony Nese and someone like Davari with someone like Tyler Breeze, who has had, for, for no reason, Tyler Breeze has had more opportunities than Tony Nese. Again, I'm not saying that Tony Nese and Davari were going to be the next Rock and, and, and Stone Cold, right? I'm not saying that at all. They probably would be just as bad as Fandango and Tyler Breeze, which I was kind of enjoying. But you understand what I'm saying, right? The point is, for some reason, Tony Nese never got that opportunity, right? Tony Nese was a cruiserweight, a perennial cruiserweight. People like Buddy Murphy, people like Cedric Alexander got an opportunity. They've done fucking nothing with it, right? Uh, Mustafa Ali got an opportunity. He's done fucking nothing with it, you know? So instead of keeping Mustafa Ali, why don't you fire Mustafa Ali, Cedric Alexander, and they already fired Buddy Murphy, right? And give people like Tony Nese and Arya Davari a chance. Then, if Arya Davari and Tony Nese become the next... I don't know, Cedric Alexander and Buddy Murphy, fire their ass too. But it is a shame that they never got any chance. And because they never got any chance, there will be no smart neckbeards like petitioning for them, right? Because what happens is this, people like Aleister Black get continuous chances to put themselves over. But because they are dry, boring, weird looking, uncharismatic douchebags, right? The, they don't get their opportunity. They, they really don't, don't make anything of it. Not, not get it, but they don't make anything of their opportunity, right? Then we're always going to be left to wonder, what if what if Tony Nese was the next Randy Orton, right? Probably not, you know, probably not. But he never got the opportunity. So for me, uh, people like Arya Davari and Tony Nese, thus far on this list, and even August Gray, I don't know him. But that, that's what makes it sad. I don't know him. I couldn't form an opinion on someone like August Gray because they never put him on TV. You know, it's not the end of the world, but it's like you have put people like Kevin Owens on TV and the majority of people that know what they're talking about have either turned the channel or have been talking shit about Kevin Owens for years now, right? So why not give August Gray a chance? Surely when they hired him, they had some sort of vision with what he may have become. But anyways... That's neither here nor there. Ari Davari, Tony Nice, August Gray. These are people that I would have liked to see a bit more of because the facts are what the facts are. You know, I'd rather see them than Sami Zayn. So there you have it, right? Tyler Breeze, obviously on the same boat as Fandango. Tyler Breeze, as soon as I saw him, I'm like, this guy is like just another Dolph Ziggler. But he's not Dolph Ziggler. He's basically Dolph Ziggler several years after Dolph Ziggler. So it's like, this guy's never going to make it. I knew immediately. As soon as I saw Tyler Breeze in NXT, I'm like, this guy's never going to make it because eventually... He's going to meet Dolph Ziggler. And even if he beats Dolph Ziggler 17 times, Dolph Ziggler is a two-time champion. So at the end of the day, when the when the when that, that uh, initial, you know, excitement of a new wrestler wears off, what do you have uh, when that when that wears off with someone like Tyler Breeze? You got nothing. You got a jobber. So Tyler Breeze, as far as I'm concerned, this guy hasn't drawn one dime for the company and he's been employed for like 10 years. So there you have it. The Bollywood boys, I always like these guys. Um... They're also a, a team that I don't believe should have been released. I think they would have made a good uh, London and Kendrick type tag team. You know, they're interesting. They're different. Uh, they're entertaining. I like them. I enjoy them. You know what I mean? I don't know why these guys have to be released. But like Ruby Riot, uh, I actually, actually I think she was released too. But you know what I'm saying? If she wasn't, you know, I don't know why people like them uh, don't have a job. 
But let's think of someone else that does have a job that sucks ass completely. You know what I mean? I mean, the entire raw roster, let's be honest, right? But, I, I, but you understand what I'm saying. Why do they have a job or why do they not have a job and fucking grizzled young veterans have a job or any other tag team in the UK? Why do they have jobs when these guys don't? You know what I mean? Are they better? Marina Shafir, I've seen her. I've seen enough. This girl has absolutely zero going for her. This is another case of nepotism with the fact that she's Roderick Strong's wife, I guess. They they hired her. She's like a failed... Let's look up her, her MMA record really fast. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's like a losing record in some like no-name division. You know what I mean? She's probably like 2-5 and five or some bullshit. Let's see here. Yeah, she's 1-2. and two, You know? Like, it's fucking ridiculous. You know, she was an MMA fighter for like a year and two months. She's had three fights. And, and two of those fights, she lost in 37 seconds both. You know, this is ridiculous. Like, basically, all she did was win one fight. And now she has this, like, this mantra of, like, oh, she's an MMA fighter. No, she's not. Like, she, she's had one fight. Anyone can win one fight against some jobber with no Wikipedia. You know what I mean? So, as far as I'm concerned, good for Marina Shafir because she leveraged her one MMA win to, like, several years of getting paid to do absolutely nothing. You know what I mean? I'm glad she's gone. This broad has, has added nothing to this show. Same thing with Jessamine Duke. They've added absolutely nothing. There is no reason these, these people should even be hired. Kurt Stallion, I don't know who he is, so I'll put him with the August Gray category. We should have seen more of Kurt Stallion. Maybe he would have been great. Arturo Huas. Arturo Huas, this guy is a guy that I've seen and I would have liked to see more of. You know, he To me, he's a more believable Alistair Black in the sense that like you can tell this guy's a badass. right? He looks like he's in better shape than Alistair Black. Um... He looks like he can beat the shit out of Alistair Black, quite frankly, right? I don't know what Alistair Black has over this guy. The tattoos, I guess, you know? Get your tattoos now, kids. They might give you a career one day, you know? Who the fuck said back in the day, like, oh, tattoos are going to prevent you from having a career? Not if you're Alistair Black, because that's all you bring to the table is tattoos. And there you have it, motherfucks. Killian Dane. Killian Dane was interesting with sanity in the sense that, like, he was, like, a big guy that could do some cool things. But we've seen Killian Dane come and go a million times. In different iterations, you know, your Vladimir Kozlovs, your uh, Ezekiel Jacksons, you know, he, I, I put him in that same category, like, oh, or your Lars Sullivan's, oh, it's like this weird looking guy that like will never really be a star because he doesn't have like the perfect physique that you need if you're that big, you need to have a really good physique, even Ezekiel Jackson was a little bit weird looking, you know, his body was a little bit weird looking, you know, I mean, then obviously this guy was never going to make it, like you could just look at him and be like, this guy will never make it, motherfucks, I don't even know why you hired him, right? Tino Sabatelli, this guy, I don't like him only because of the fact that he hasn't even wrestled a match. Again, probably not his fault, but the facts are what the facts are, you know. I need I need to see you wrestle, motherfucks. I need to see you wrestle. But once again, Tino Sabatelli uh, never got a chance, right? He's like, he's, like, he's like the cuddler guy. The cuddler guy from Forgotten Sons. He, he was an employee for like 10 years, had like three matches, you know what I mean? And then like, I'm sure that when, when uh, Steve Cutler, whatever his name was, left, I think he's in TNA now or something, like, like I'm sure he's like, oh, WWE held me down. Like, shut the fuck up. You've been paid 10 years to do nothing. You know what I mean? So there you have it. Um, facts are what the facts are. A lot of these people suck, but a lot of these people never had a chance, you know? So when I see someone, just to reiterate, motherfucks, when I see someone like Samoa Joe getting fired, I don't feel bad because I know that he at least had a chance. You know what I mean? He had a chance. I mean, like... Maybe, like, the chance didn't go exactly like people thought it would, but he had a chance, you know? Some of these motherfucks didn't have a chance at all. That being said, motherfucks, uh, it sucks to see some of these people go, but for a lot of them, I couldn't give a rat's ass, so there you go. Um, I hear there's more cuts on the way. It's not surprising, because when your roster is full of people like Tyler Breeze, Marina Shafir, uh, and Killian Dane, you know, and Samoa Joe... You're going to have to release a few people. You know, you can't keep paying these. Like, think about it. Let's go through this really quickly one more time. Tandango, Everize, Davari, Nice, uh, Tyler Breeze, Bollywood Boys, Marina Shafir, Kurt Stallion, Arturo Huos, Killian Dane, and Tino Sepatelli. I would venture to say that these and all of these acts combined have not drawn one dime for WWE. Not one dime. I'm not even exaggerating. Like, maybe Fandango, you know, at a certain point... Fandango may have drawn like a half a dime or something like that. But beyond that, none of these people have drawn any money. Not one person has gone to an event and thought, I'm buying a ticket because August Gray is wrestling today. Not one person has thought that. 
So that being said, motherfuckers, it's not like a huge tragedy. It's totally understandable. But I would have liked to see some of these people have a chance. Um, basically have, have higher churn. You know, higher turnover, if you will, right? It's like, you've tried Mustafa Ali. You've tried him. He's not going to be a star. It's not happening. You know, get rid of him and give August Gray a chance. And then, and when I say a chance, I mean one tiny push. One tiny push. If he doesn't get over, beat it, kid. We'll find someone else. There you have it. That's a much better strategy to me than the current strategy of continuously push Kevin Owens, hoping that one day he'll make money for you. It's not going to happen, motherfuckers. It's not going to happen. All right, cuts. See you motherfuckers later.